Welcome to JASP Tutorials. Today I'll show you how to do a Bayesian paired samples t-test using JASP. The first step is to load the data into JASP by going to the File tab, clicking on Computer, then Browse, find your data set. In this case, ours is called paired t-test.csv. Double click it, and now we've loaded the data. You can see in the data panel here that we measured the response of 15 participants on two measures, which we've named simply measure one and measure two. We want to know whether the response for measure one differs from that of measure two. To do the Bayesian paired samples t-test, go up to t-tests and click on Bayesian paired samples t-test from the drop-down menu. Now we're into the options panel. Let's go through some of the options. The first option is the hypothesis option. This is where you specify your alternative hypothesis. The default test is a non-directional alternative, which we will use to analyze our data. If you have a directional prediction, you can change this option to appropriately reflect this expectation. Next is the Bayes factor option. Choosing BF10 means the results will report a Bayes factor in favor of the alternative hypothesis, whereas choosing BF01 will return a Bayes factor in favor of the null hypothesis. We'll leave it at BF10 for now. The next option is the prior option. If you had relevant background knowledge about the potential size of the effect, you could incorporate that here, but for now we're going to leave it at the default value of 0.707. Later in the video, we'll check how our choice of prior affects the results. We'll come back to the rest of the options later, but for now let's get on to the analysis. In the results panel to the right, there's an empty table. To populate it, we first drag measure 1 over from the left box to the right box, and then we drag measure 2 over to the second slot in the right box. Let's go over this table. In the table, there are two columns. The BF column lists the Bayes factor. In this case, the Bayes factor is about 1500 in favor of the alternative hypothesis. What this means is that the alternative hypothesis predicts the data over 1500 times better than the null hypothesis. The error column lists the proportional error associated with the value of the Bayes factor. JASP uses simulation techniques and efficient approximation methods to calculate some of its Bayes factors, and this number reflects how accurate we can expect these estimates of the Bayes factor to be. As long as this error isn't much larger than about 10%, you can safely ignore this column. There are many other options for the Bayesian t-test. Let's go back to the options panel and review them. Since we used a non-directional alternative hypothesis, we can't tell how the two measures differ just from the Bayes factor. We only know that there is evidence that they do differ. To see how they differ, we can click on Descriptives under the Additional Statistics option to create a table of descriptive statistics. From this table, you can see exactly how they differ. The mean of measure 1 is larger than the mean of measure 2. We can also click the Descriptives Plot option to give a graphical display of the measure's means and their associated 95% credible intervals. Next, let's click the Prior and Posterior Plot option. Here you see the prior distribution is the dashed line and the posterior distribution is the solid line. Most of the posterior distribution falls on large, positive values of the effect size. There are also two dots on this plot and they represent the height of the curves at the null hypothesis of no effect. You can see that the first dot on the prior distribution is higher than the dot on the posterior distribution. This means that the Bayes factor supports the alternative hypothesis. If the dot on the posterior distribution had been higher than the dot on the prior distribution, then the null hypothesis would have been supported. 
To show more information on this plot, let's click the Additional Info option. Now you see a graphical representation of the Bayes factor, as well as a 95% credible interval for the effect size. You may remember that we left the prior width at its default value of 0 0.707. There might be other reasonable choices for the prior. That's why it's always a good idea to see how robust our conclusions are to the prior we choose. JASP makes it easy to see how the Bayes factor changes for a wide range of prior widths with the Bayes factor robustness check plot option. So let's click that and scroll down. Here you see a range of values for the prior width on the x-axis and the value of the Bayes factor on the y-axis. A Bayes factor above 1 represents evidence in favor of the alternative hypothesis, and a Bayes factor below 1 represents evidence in favor of the null hypothesis. In this case, as the width of the prior gets bigger, so too does the Bayes factor. You'll notice that except for tiny values of the prior width, the Bayes factor is above 100, which usually can be considered very strong evidence. If the qualitative conclusion doesn't change with reasonable variations to the prior width, then we can say our result is fairly robust. Of course, what counts as a reasonable variation depends on the context in which you're testing. For our example, the Bayes factor looks very robust to changes in the prior width. The final option for the Bayesian t-test is the sequential analysis plot option. Let's scroll down, and you'll see here that the x-axis is the number of data points. On the y-axis, there's the Bayes factor. And on this plot, we track the Bayes factor as it changes after every data point. We can add a basic robustness check to this plot by clicking on the robustness check sub-option. This shows how different prior widths affect the Bayes factor at each data point. And that's all there is to it. This has been a Bayesian paired samples t-test using JASP. Thanks for watching.